We saw in the video the trillion dollar bet. They talked a lot about the Black Shoals option pricing model. In fact, the first half of the show was essentially devoted to finding an option pricing formula. And they showed Myron Shoals sitting at his desk deriving a formula, and they showed uh, Robert Merton writing on a piece of glass backwards the formula. It looks a little bit different. I think they used L for the exercise price or something, but this is the Black Shoals option pricing formula. And I want to give you a, a little bit of an explanation so you have an understanding of what it is and how it works. Now, from the video, we saw that basically the formula is derived based on this concept of creating this this dynamically hedged portfolio, this risk-free portfolio. And it's very much akin to the binomial option pricing formula for which I have a couple of tutorials, except it's in continuous time. That is, time is always changing. In the binomial formula, there were two discrete time periods, right now and one period in the future. Now, what does the formula essentially say here? It's S times ND1, and I'll explain ND1 in a minute, minus essentially the present value of the exercise price. E to the RT is continuous time present value factor. When you divide by it, it's the present uh, continuous time present value factor. If I wrote X divided by 1 plus R raised to the teeth power, you'd probably be more familiar with that from financial management class, times ND2. Well, if you sort of ignore ND1 and ND2, what you have here is the call option is equal to the stock price, the current stock price, minus the present value of the exercise price, which makes a lot of sense. Because if you buy a call option, you don't actually have to buy the stock until sometime in the future. So the option has value in the sense that even if the stock price doesn't go above the exercise price, the fact that you don't have to pay for the stock right now, you only have to bank the present value of the exercise price in order to be able to pay for it. So the call option has value. What the ND1 and ND2 do is essentially they adjust for risk. And down here we have these definitions of the D1 part and the D2 part. And I'll explain what the ND1 and ND2 is. But the reason you get two of these numbers, you get a D1 and a D2, is it turns out this is a quadratic function. If you remember from, you know, whatever, eighth grade or ninth grade algebra class, you had that quadratic formula, and you got two, two roots, you know, plus or minus, you know, this or that, you know, B plus or minus the square root of something over 4AC, I believe. I don't remember the formula exactly, but um, you got two roots. That's what you get here. So you get two roots here. Now, the roots include the stock price and the exercise price. We're using X for the exercise price. The risk-free rate, the variance of the stock's returns, how volatile it is, okay, divided by two, the time until the option expires, okay, and then um, the, the variance and time are also in the denominator. So actually what's really neat about the Black-Scholes formula is that the stock price, you can just look up in the paper. It's the current stock price. It's not a projected stock price. The exercise price is the exercise price for the option. You can just look that up. The risk-free rate, you can look up a rate on three-month treasury bills. Okay, How many days until the option expires? You want to annualize that. So if it expires in 200 days, it's 200 divided by 365. It's some fraction of a year. So if it expires in 182 days, that's that's about half a year. Okay, so you're, you're going to annualize everything. Um, the only thing you have to estimate is the volatility, the variance of the stock's returns. So it's a pretty good model. Now this is an important variable, so um, if it if you don't pick the right variance, you're going to get the wrong the wrong answer. Now let me explain the end part of the D1 and the D2. This is what's called the normal cumulative distribution function. And you, you actually did this in stats class. Remember, remember the normal distribution? You know, that bell-shaped curve that many professors grade over. Okay. What D1 and D2 are, what you're looking for is, let's say D1 is, is right here. 
and you would draw up, it's the area under the curve to the left of D1. So in the normal distribution, remember it's a probability distribution, the total area under the curve is 1, 100%. If you are right in the middle, if D1 was equal to, if this is the standard normal distribution, so that means it has a standard deviation of 1 and a mean of 0. So if D1 was 0, you would have um, ND1 would be a half. Okay, Half the area is to the left of the curve. All right. How do you get this number? Well, you can look it up in, um, you know, in a stats book. There are tables in the back of the book. If you use Excel, you can actually do this by... Um, they have a function that does this. And in another tutorial, I'll show you how to actually calculate the Black-Scholes formula using, your cal using a, a spreadsheet. It's really quite easy to do. You can put the variables in. And what's nice about it is if you put them in in such a way that they're in separate cells, you can change some of these numbers and see how that affects the value of the call option so you can get a feel for it. So it's a nice way to do it. Spreadsheets are really, really good tools for doing little simulations, for understanding how how um, the price of something changes when we change a variable so that's that's all this thing is you know it looks like a fairly complicated mess but and it was very difficult for them to derive in fact when they first came up with the formula they had a very very difficult time publishing the paper because the people who understood the significance of an option didn't really understand the math and the people who understood the math didn't understand the significance of an option and it was they had a very tough time even though this is this was nobel prize winning work this is this is something that the real world actually uses this is one of the great discoveries in finance um, they had a very difficult time getting people to accept it you know now it's now it's widely accepted and widely used and people have modified the model and made it more sophisticated but this was the original one and so, you know, basically a call option has a certain value even if there were no risk involved because the, um, the fact that you don't have to pay for, this, for the stock, pay the exercise price until some later date, gives the call option value. And let me, let me mention a couple of things here since there are these variables here. Okay, so the value of the call option is a function of these variables. It's a function of the stock price. It's a function of the exercise price. It's a function of the volatility, okay? How much the, sto the stock's returns fluctuate. Um, it's a function of the time until the option expires and also the risk-free rate. And what's the relationship? Well, there's a positive relationship between stock price and call option value. The higher the stock price, the more valuable the call option, right? Because you can buy it at the exercise price regardless of what the price of the stock is. So the higher the price of the stock, the more valuable it is. Okay? It's negatively related to the, to the exercise price because that's the buy price. The cheaper you can buy it for, the better. Okay? Um, in terms of volatility, you actually like volatility. Normally we don't like our stock's price to go up and down. But because you have no downside risk or you have limited downside risk, you just the premium, the price you paid for the option. If the stock goes way up, you make a lot of money. If the stock goes way down, you just throw the option away. So it's positively related. Okay? Time until the option expires, well, intuitively, the longer it is until the option expires, the more valuable it is to you. Okay? Oftentimes we use options, option pricing theory, to value insurance contracts. Think about it in insurance policy. If you've just renewed your auto insurance policy, you have a year until it expires, it's worth a lot more than if it expires tomorrow. If it expires tomorrow and you don't get in an accident in the next 24 hours, you don't get anything from it. So that's, that's one of the things. The more time you have, the more time there is for it to go up in value. And the risk-free rate, it's positively related. If the higher the interest rate is, the more valuable it is
to be able to buy the stock now. If you think about this in present value terms, right, if we ignore ND1 and ND2, you know, the, if a higher interest rate would make the present value of the exercise price smaller, which would make, if the stock price stayed the same, would make the call option more valuable. So, you know, everything is given with the exception, everything you can look up in the paper, with the exception of sigma squared. So this is a pretty neat model, okay? Fairly complicated uh, to derive when, when Black and Scholes did it and Merton, but um, quite simple to use and quite simple to apply. And in the next tutorial, I will show you how to set up a little spreadsheet so you can actually value a call option.